I'm Danny Gurry, and you've tuned in to Good Morning Frederick. It's a podcast, well, about Frederick. Everything, the people, the businesses, the nonprofits, and the cool stuff. So sit back, relax, and enjoy Good Morning Frederick. Good morning, Frederick. It is Wednesday, April 24th. And I am your host, Danny Gurry. Okay, already starting off great. Have you subscribed to us on YouTube yet? Please do. We're at 150 subscribers and I'm trying to get to 200 by the end of the weekend. We have over 5,000 views on our channel and you guys have racked up more than 138 hours of watch time all in three and a half weeks. And I thank you so much. Uh, I really, I, I just thank you for the continued support for our small businesses and nonprofits. And um, the more you guys watch and share, the more it's going to help them. Now, let's get to why you're here today. Tons of great stuff. I talk with Melissa from Student Homelessness Initiative Partnership, also known as SHIP of Frederick County. You'll also meet Tiffany from Pet and Home Care. And you're going to hear from Joanne and Douglas about America's 250th History Fair, which happens this Sunday. And we've got giveaways. I'd love to be able to give you some great stuff. Uh, we've got that Good Morning Frederick t-shirt, just like the one I'm wearing here. So cool. So many people have asked me, and yes, we are going to set up a merch shop. I'm going to get that taken care of ASAP. We're going to do some fun tank tops, t-shirts, and stuff for the summer. Um, but anyway, you can win one of the Good Morning Frederick t-shirts. You'd be the only one to have one yet, except for me and my husband. Uh, plus a $25 gift certificate for window tinting. And then we've also got that month-long pass for the SOS Safe Ride in May. And we've got that family four pack of tickets to see the cows play. Look, we play Friday, uh, Friday night at seven. We play Sunday at three. You've got to come to see the flying cows. It's so fun. In fact, right now, if you want tickets to go to the game, either Friday or Sunday, just text me. It's not even going to be a contest. You just text me. And I'm going to get you tickets to the games because you've got to go. It is so, so much fun. You will love it. And if you've got kids or grandkids, they're going to have a blast. And if you don't and you just want to come hang out, you will love it. I promise you. I promise you'll have a good time. Uh, we have a great time at the games. And I'm the official MC. And who knows, if you show up and come say hi, might get you out on the court for some fun between uh, the, on the timeouts. We play games. You can win other prizes there as well. All right, let's get this stuff started on this beautiful Wednesday. Want to thank our sponsor, overall sponsor, Fox Tree Designs. They printed all my swag, the sweatshirts, t-shirts, and stickers as well. They do full color lettering for signs, banners, labels. You go to foxtreedesigns.com, check them out. Quick service, excellent design skills, um, great, great place, and obviously locally owned, which we love. All right, weather today, partly cloudy. Chance of a straight shower or thunderstorm possible with a high of 72. Tomorrow, partly cloudy and 63. Friday, mostly sunny and 66. Saturday, good news, showers have moved out of the forecast. It's going to be 66 and cloudy for Battle of the Bands. Perfect weather for that event. But hold on, Sunday, high of 85, and Monday, a high of 90. Okay, so, and it looks like the whole first part of next week is going to be in the 80s. So I cannot wait. I'm welcoming that. All right, we would like to show you who's doing good in the neighborhood.
Doing Good in the Neighborhood is sponsored by We Help You Move. Whether you're moving across the street or across the country, Nicholas and his team of moving experts can make the whole thing easy. Veteran owned and a supporter of the Frederick community, we help you move. Dot com. If you haven't been introduced to Ship Frederick County yet, you must check them out. Melissa Muntz, the executive director, continues to make strides, assisting more and more students each year who are affected by homelessness. Let's meet Melissa. One thing about Frederick uh, that we're growing so much is fantastic. Unfortunately, sometimes what that brings with it are kids who need our help. And I am talking to Melissa Muntz, the executive director of SHIP, Student Homelessness Initiative Partnership. Is that right? That's right. Okay, That's right. okay, got it. So uh, SHIP helps out homeless students. And uh, I'm going to let Melissa kind of give us the brief on how SHIP came to be and where it is today. Sure. Well, thank you so much for having me. And I'm always happy to talk about this important topic. So many of the students we serve fly very under the radar. So there are actually more than a thousand students in Frederick County Public Schools alone experiencing homelessness. Um, wow. And that doesn't even count those that are in college, those who haven't entered school yet. There are just so many young people trying to connect to education in our community that are experiencing housing insecurity. So mm. we exist to help them. We know that um, young people who don't graduate from high school are three and a half times more likely to experience homelessness as an adult. Yeah. So we try very hard to build capacity in the students we serve so that they can ultimately break that cycle of homelessness. They stay connected to education, they graduate, they take action on going to their next step, whether that's college, uh, trade school, workforce training, whatever that next step may be to right. become an adult who is not experiencing homelessness. So we do this by working with students all the way from kindergarten through age 24. And we really specialize in case management, which is an individual approach to helping students. So really making sure there's not a one size fits all solution because every student has a totally different set of barriers. Yeah. Yeah. We wanna make sure that we're really customizing our approach student by student to make sure that we eliminate those barriers and teach them how to build capacity so that they can move on to their next step when they're eventually without us. Yes, yes. And I mean, what you guys do is just fantastic. Now, uh, of those thousand homeless students, um, how many are you guys kind of in contact with or have a relationship with? So we are typically serving around 300 students at a time in our program. Um, that can look a lot of different ways. Um, there are students who are uh, receiving driver's education. There are students who are helping with the FAFSA. There are students who we're goal setting with and service planning with. Um, there are students who were providing hygiene items to and clothing and shoes and shelf stable food. It really runs the gamut. Um, yeah. But we typically are serving about 300 students at a time, and that's a one-on-one -on -one relationship with a case manager. So it's not just a one-time, okay, here are your students and walk away. Right. Um, it really is that in-depth uh, service. Yes. Well, what I one thing I know about your organization is you are not the check the box kind of people. You are <laughs> make sure you if the if the student wants the help, you're providing it or getting them to somebody who can provide the help for them, which is um, mm -hmm. just extraordinary. So for 300 students, how many case managers do you guys have? We, we actually have uh, four case managers in our New Horizons program one case manager in our housing program, as well as our resource coordinator who's working with a lot of our younger students. We also have management staff who oversee those people and sometimes take on a caseload themselves. Mm. Um, so we really are, um, you know, we're a small but mighty organization. Yes. Um, not a huge staff, but I think we're able to accomplish a lot. Uh, we're really focused on not reinventing the wheel and making sure that when we aren't the expert in something, we're connecting to a, stu a student to the people who are. Yeah. Um, so a great example of that is we don't provide legal services. That's not our expertise. We don't try to do that, but we make sure that the student is able to establish a relationship with someone who does provide free or low cost legal services if that is needed. And we're happy to walk them through that process. 
So, yeah. you know, we really have been able to have a, an efficient model to serving a lot of students very effectively because we are thoughtful about what our role is in helping the student, knowing that this amazing community has a million other people involved in that. Um, and they all have a role. And that's super important. Um, we definitely are not the end all be all. <laughs> yeah. So I think that really helps. Well, I do know that, you know, so many organizations kind of overlap a little bit. But the great thing about that is when you share those resources, you're able to kind of also help that the person you're helping on the other end in a more well-rounded way, right? So, yeah. Yep, that's exactly right. And we love that. You know, we really want to be a good community yeah. partner to so many of the other organizations that help our students. It, it benefits all of us to work together as best we can. So. For sure. What would you say right now, uh, as you're looking ahead, is the biggest challenge for SHIP or and or the, the students of our community? There are a lot of processes that we've improved upon and that the community has improved upon. One area we still see a lot of struggles um, with is our immigrant population. So there are a lot of young people who are immigrating here. Um, a lot of them don't have a parent or guardian present and they're experiencing homelessness newly. So they're not chronically homeless. They've just arrived here in the country fairly recently, um, but they have limited English skills. And although we're able to provide some support in that way, and we do have um, you know, multilingual staff uh, here at SHIP, um, it does put them significantly behind in completing that high school education. Mm. And so, you know, as a community, I'm excited that we're starting to look at non-traditional paths to achieving that high school diploma and also non-traditional paths to moving forward from there. So, for example, um, if a young person um, is an immigrant student and has not fully completed their immigration process, um, they are unable to work legally, which mm. means they can't participate in things like apprenticeship programs. and um, paid internship opportunities and things that could be a really great stepping stone for them from that high school experience into their next step. Right. They also are often um, in sheltered English classes, uh, meaning that they're in the schools um, learning in their native language with assistance, and that's wonderful. Um, but again, it sort of it sort of delays that process. So we have to put a lot of supports in place to wrap around them when they're ready to make that transition into regular classes. Yeah. Um, if you can imagine, you know, learning a new language and also reading the Iliad in a 12th grade English <laughs> class. <laughs> yeah. Um, not exactly easy. Um, yeah. So, you know, I think that what we're seeing right now is the biggest need that we have to sort of figure out as a community how to better support is wrapping around that immigrant population who may have come here without a parent or guardian and figuring out how we help them get to that next step. And that doesn't mean just, you know, throwing supports at them and walking away. It means really transitioning them out of that cycle of homelessness and that cycle of poverty and giving yeah. them that chance to succeed as an adult. When kids get to 18, um, how does that work for SHIP? You know, what happens to those kids? Yeah, so we serve all the way up to 24. So as okay. long as they're still connected to education, um, it doesn't matter that they turned 18 for our purposes. Okay. What it does do, that's a good thing, is it actually makes them eligible for more of our service. So for instance, we can provide um, rapid rehousing um, to our students who are 18 and over, which is us assisting them in entering a lease and then providing some su uh, supplemental rent assistance. Oh, wow. Um, so now that they're 18, they actually can engage in even more of our case management based services. Um, we may be able to help them purchase a vehicle. We may be able to help them get insurance. These are all things that we can do now that they're 18, which are wonderful. Um, they can sign for themselves for some things like us transporting them. They could, yeah. if, you know, if they didn't have a parent or guardian to sign and they were 16, that's a barrier. But now they're 18, they can sign for themselves. So we continue to work with them all the way through 24 because we can st still consider those youth. What do you guys have coming up that we as a community can support? Yeah, so the very next thing coming up is on May 23rd, our annual Lip Sync fundraiser is coming up. If you go to shipfrederick.com, you could certainly purchase a ticket to attend. It is a lot of fun. Um, there'll be a pasta bar, there'll be beer, there'll be wine. Um, it's it's a great, we have eight teams registered to compete, to lip sync against each other. So it's gonna be a really fun time. From a programming side, we're really happy that our New Horizons Summer Academy program, um, which is a credit recovery program we do over the summer, um, currently has 88 applicants. Um, but this is the highest number we've ever had enrolled this early. And, um, you know, we're really excited about that. Um, last year, we graduated 77 Academy participants. And so this year, the opportunity to go up even more is exciting. 
Um, and we're really happy that we'll be able to provide those students with a lot of important, not just credit recovery opportunities, but life skills opportunities. Yeah. So we do health and wellness. We're doing, um, you know, uh, financial literacy, all things that are really important for this population. It's a popular program for a reason. Um, yeah. It is leading to direct results. And actually, there was just recently some data released that over the last two years, the graduation rate for young people experiencing homelessness at Frederick County Public Schools has increased by over 13%. Oh, that is significant. Wow. And it tracks completely with the increase in services we've been able to provide in those programs. Um, so it's really exciting that, you know, there's no coincidence. It, it right. is truly a result of very hard work by so many community members to circle around this population and provide them with resources to get ahead. Immediately after walking across that stage, they are less likely to experience homelessness again. And yeah. so I'm really proud of that. It's really exciting. You should be. You should be. And I know that how you guys feel about these students and, you know, how how proud you are when they do walk across the stage. If you were to say anything to our audience about what SHIP is all about, what, what would you like them to know? I really think that it truly is about wrapping around our students and then providing them the opportunity to build capacity. Um, we really focus on that capacity building, youth choice, so respecting their wishes and desires, presenting all the options to our young people and saying, what do you want to do and let us yeah. help you get there. We really have to make sure that we're providing them with the tools and the opportunity that any other young person who has um, an involved and dedicated parent, who has a stable home, who has been provided with all the supports we hope that we will give our children, yeah. um, you know, we, we need to give them that same opportunity. We have to figure out how we can get to know the young person and really help them pave their own path. It's an early intervention model, and I think that is key. We're going to make sure and showcase the website, get your tickets for the lip sync competition. So fun. You're going to want to go out. It's a lot of fun, and you're supporting an amazing organization. Melissa, we really appreciate your time today, and I know you're going to continued success here in Frederick. Oh, thank you so much. And thanks so much for having us. I mean, what a great organization. You know, it's, it's, I guess, sad to think that the, we need an organization like SHIP, but uh, homelessness amongst children is a growing number. And so glad that SHIP is there for those that need support. If you can get your ticket for the lip sync battle, it is a great time. You will have so much fun. And obviously that ticket is going to help support SHIP, hopefully to, you know, help even more than 300 some kids. All right, after the short break, we'll hear all about pet and home care and find out what this America's 250 uh, Walk Through Time History event is coming this Sunday. Just a quick break with All in One Events and the Goddesses of Real Estate plus a &S Construction coming up right now. All-in-One Events is Frederick's number one source for event rentals and entertainment. Please visit us on the web at www.aioeventgroup.com or call 1-888-727-8902 for more information. If you're planning an event, definitely give George a call at All-in-One Events. He'll take good care of you. All right, a &S Construction is a local and award-winning woman and minority-owned business located right here in Frederick. They specialize in roofing, siding, windows, gutters, patios, and decks. Uh, you can give Sandra a call at 301-703-2157 or email her info at ansconstruction.net or, of course, you can visit them on the web, ansconstruction.net. There's a special offer for Good Morning Frederick viewers. You can get $750 off any roof or siding replacement or $50 off any roof repairs that you schedule before April 30th. The weather is warming up. It's a perfect time to start those outdoor projects. Give Sandra a call and let her know that you found her on Good Morning Frederick. All right, now we're going to check out the market makers.
Market Makers is sponsored by Intense Barbecue, family-owned barbecue food truck and catering company, cooking in small batches to ensure that the food is the freshest it can be. You can find them at IntenseBarbecue.com. That's I-N, the number one, zero, S-E, barbecue.com, and satisfy your meat tooth. At just 17 years old, Tiffany Lewis saw a need in the pet care industry, and she's embarked on a 25-year journey of growth and development of her company, Pet and Home Care. Let's meet Tiffany. Well, Tiffany is single-handedly adding to the businesses we have in Frederick, and this one is no different. Pet and Home Care. You were basically a baby when you started this business. I did. So tell us a little bit about how it came to be. I think you said 1999. How Mm -hmm. old were you then? I don't want to give away your age. No, it's fine. (laughs) I was a teenager in high school. We are getting ready to graduate when my company kind of started taking off my senior year of high school which was uh, 99, I graduated 2000, but things really started rolling. Then that's when I made it official. I was doing pet sitting before then, but yeah. That's when we really got boots to the ground and I started really hustling. Did you did you grow up in a family that was like entrepreneurial <laughs> focus? My mom's an entrepreneur. Yeah. My dad was an entrepreneur. Ah. My grandfather's an entrepreneur. My uncle, my aunts, yeah. basically everyone in my okay. family works for okay. themselves. So, so the it fact was normal. If you, if you didn't start a business, they would have been like, hey, what's wrong? Yeah. Black sheep. <laughs> no, okay. So you were right in line with the family plan of starting your own company. And, um, you know, kudos to you for taking the pet sitting kind of to make extra cash, kind of like babysitting, but better. Mm-hmm. Not yes. the kids. They don't talk back. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And, uh, and then really taking that next step to making mm-hmm. it official. So 1999, you launch. We're in 2024. <laughs> you got this beautiful space here. Thank you. And uh, yeah, <laughs> Sorry. and um, you're you're booking clients. So you've got yes. kenneling and pet pet watching. Tell us, mm-hmm. tell us all the things because I know that there's a lot. Sure. We offer a full suite of professional pet care services. Our number one pet sitting service is our in-home pet care. We go to the house. We can walk a dog, feed a cat, take care of other small animals. Most people choose our 30 minute visit. It's enough time to get the basics in. Mm. Our second most popular service is what I founded the business on, which is overnight pet sitting. Okay. No one was doing this in the 90s, early 2000s. Okay. We have professional pet sitters that will sleep in clients' home while they're traveling, giving clients that peace of mind. They know someone's in the home with their pet, someone's there overnight in case there's an emergency. Yeah. And that's really been a, a top service for us. Okay. And then right next to that is our boarding and daycare at our pet resort in Clarksburg. Okay. So yeah, you pretty much are the whole shebang when it comes to pets. How do you hire, and I know, you know we wanna talk about it, but how do you find the people mm-hmm. for your company? It's hard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is the most challenging part of running this business. Yeah. After you know being in business for nearly, actually over 25 years yeah. now, I've hired hundreds and hundreds of people. Yeah. But it's always a challenge because I'm very particular. Uh-huh. I want to find people who are, first of all, they have to be an adult. You've yeah. got to be over 18. Yeah. You've got to have a car and a smartphone. But you also have to be honest, reliable, no criminal background, yeah. and an absolute animal lover. Yeah. And it sounds like it'd be easy to find, but a lot of people might have those traits, but maybe they're missing... Uh, some common sense yeah. or being punctual. So yeah. we're very strict on who we hire, yeah. but we've built a great team because we want to attract career-minded people. So we offer benefits to all of our employees, included an employer-matched 401k. Holy cow. Mm-hmm. Yep, front-loaded PTO for the year. Everyone's an employee, a partial gas reimbursement. So we're, we're attracting people who are looking for something long-term in animal care, not just a little side hustle. Right, right. Is this good that school teacher who might, I mean, is it flexible is what I guess I'm getting to. Like, can they kind of work around their schedules? Absolutely. We're yeah. super flexible. I definitely have at least one teacher on our team right now. <laughs> we have had others. It's really great for working moms. Yeah. When the kids are in school, those are usually part of our busiest days of the year. Um, And then when the kids are out of school during summer, those are even busier. So we would need parents that have childcare, um, but it's great for for parents. Um, It's great for students, especially students that live locally and either um, 
use online pro classes too. Yeah. So we have a ton of opportunities for all sorts of people, either at our kennel um, as a pet sitter, and we're even hiring another part-time care coordinator where you can help out in our office here in Urbana. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. And it's really great that this has grown. Now people know that investing in your pets, especially during the day, if you work long hours, saves you a lot of headaches in, in, from when you come home, right? Absolutely. If a pet is bored or they get restless or something happens, mm -hmm. you're not coming home to that. You're coming mm -hmm. home to a well-played, well-rested, been out to do potties uh, pet. You're getting your yeah. best version of your pet because yeah. when they're neglected during the day, they might have accidents, they might chew on things, yeah. they might feel stressed. Yeah. So having that midday dog walk, sending them to daycare, or even ensuring that you know you have several visits a day lined up when you have vacation care mm. will help ensure a happy and, and healthy pet. Yeah. What family or what person is utilizing you for, for that service mostly? Great question. Our clients are people who love their animals, first of all. Yeah. They make sure that they have their needs met. Um, these are people who maybe work long hours out of the home or even in the home. Since Zoom is now a yeah. standard practice, we have a lot of clients who are stuck on camera all day, yeah. can't break away, and maybe even they have a high needs dog who was barking a lot or needs to run around all day. So we'll pick them up in the morning, take them to our, our facility where they can run and play, or they can have that midday walk. Tons of options. Holy cow, wait a minute. So you pick up and drop off for your oh, day? Yes. <laughs> oh, come on. You can't, how? I would, you would have a hundred dogs. How is that? That's awesome. Yep. We have two vans that run around between Montgomery County and Frederick County twice a day. We're picking up early morning and bringing them home in the afternoon. Dog tired. Oh <laughs> my gosh. That is fabulous. Oh, I, that is excellent. Now, do you provide the cameras during doggy daycare for those parents who are freaked out? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, no pictures. Oh. Of course, yeah. a lot of kennels have all kinds of different um, opportunities to check on your pet during the day. Yeah. What we utilize is our picture and video recording um, through our app. Okay. So basically, we have an app where you can book your care, you can track your care, and then we send updates through the app with pictures, videos, so you know how your pet's doing. Oh my gosh, this is a dream, dream <laughs> come true. Okay, so Frederick, all of Frederick County? Not quite all of okay. Frederick County, but we service Frederick. Frederick City uh, and yep. the basis right around. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. New Market's our number one service area. Okay. I actually purchased Critter Sitter back in 2021. Okay. And that really helped us grow our Frederick area. Ah. And we are actively hiring a new market like Linganore. Yeah. And all parts of Frederick and even Montgomery County. Yeah. Okay. So you got, you're looking for people in in the office you're looking for mm -hmm. somebody also your pet sitters your overnight people too absolutely yeah so anything anything well there's got to be a job out there for one of you as well the number one thing you would want people to know about pet and home care that's a great question while we're women own women run and women led i have a strong team of people behind us we are such an open community. Mm. We are inclusive. We welcome all types of animals mm. and animal lovers. Okay. A lot of companies, they can't handle maybe strong dogs or timid animals mm -hmm. or animals that require medication. Yeah. So that's where our team has been trained on so many different situations. We do online and in-person training. Okay. All of our team members are also certified in pet first aid and CPR. So we're prepared for any type of situation, yeah. um, but we welcome animals that need that special care. Yeah. And with our diverse team of employees, we are open around the clock. And that's probably one of the number one things about us is yeah. our hours are 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. Just office hours daily. Yeah. And we're servicing clients you know, around the clock. That should give any pet lover peace of mind. How do they get to you and start booking to get their dogs picked up and taken care of during the day? Thank you. Well, the best way to get moving is to go to our website, petandhomecare.com. You can sign up right there on our website as a new customer. You can book your services and you can also call us. You can email us. <laughs> yeah. We, like I said, are open for um, phone calls during the day, in the evenings. And if you're looking to apply, same thing. You go to our website, petandhomecare.com. On our About Us tab has our careers page. Okay. So we have all of our benefits laid out there. That's amazing. As well as all of the job opportunities we have. Well, I will tell you this. There is no company that I know of right now offering 
employees, number one, hiring as an employee, because mm -hmm. that is a huge expense for a business if you've never run a business before. <laughs> Most people who start businesses use subcontractors, so yep. they don't have to pay any benefits, including mm -hmm. PTO, sick leave, all that good stuff. So that's amazing. Um, a lot of full-time jobs certainly don't even offer 401k. <laughs> that is a, a, an extraordinary benefit. Thank you. Yeah. Well, we did that to get yeah. people who wanted to stay on our team long-term yes. because my clients and their pets, they get attached to yes. their pet sitter. And yeah. we want to find people who are looking for a long-time rewarding career yeah. in pet care. Yeah. Is there, um, off the record, a uh, the best breed of dog that you guys love? Oh boy, well, <laughs> I'm sure every team member will give a different answer. I have a few breeds that I'm fond of. Okay. I've always had a special place in my heart for golden retrievers. Okay. Uh, I also love little dogs like chihuahuas. <laughs> and of course, I have a shih tzu who uh, is sweet and loving to me, yeah. but really no one else. <laughs> <laughs> one of those, that's great, that's great. Is there any breed you would not recommend? No, it's That's awesome. we, we try not to discriminate on yeah. breeds. Our yeah. kennel has some restrictions, but yeah. in terms of in-home care, we care for all types of breeds. The main thing is training. Yeah. You got to make sure you are providing that training so that your dog is not going to be a risk in the future. Yeah. Do you guys have any recommendations for trainers that you give to? I'm so glad you asked. We actually just started a partnership with Paw by Paw Training. Okay. They're in Rockville. And through them, we are now offering board and train. Oh, there mm -hmm. you go. You can yes. go away on vacation and come back and they yes. can train you on how to train your dog. <laughs> exactly. I love it. All right. We want to thank Tiffany Lewis, petandhomecare.com. Get a job. Take care of your pet. Make sure they're loved during the day while you're away, especially those of you, and I'm so sorry you have to do this, who commute from Frederick to DC or whatever you're doing there, spent in that traffic, your poor pup is missing you. <laughs> and she can make sure that that doesn't happen. Petandhomecare.com. I mean, I think pet and home care is fantastic. Again, um, I mean, for those of you out in the workforce, you know for sure that getting a 401k and having your PTO front loaded and being an employee of a company, um, even when you're part time and all of that is just phenomenal. Um, and if you love dogs, this would be great to do. I can tell you the fact that they pick up in their vans and drop off in the afternoon is just so convenient. You don't even have to worry about dropping off your pet. So I just think what Tiffany has going there is a phenomenal business. And um, yeah, I hopefully if you're looking for a job, you can check her out. All right, after the break, you'll get the rundown of events happening in Frederick, and we're going to hear from Joanne and Doug about this history fair taking place on Carroll Creek Linear Park this Sunday. Just a second or two. We're going to hear from Dreamscape Slumber Events and Tree Trekkers. Elevate your next party with Dreamscape Slumber Events. Over 12 themes and customization available for kids, teens, and adults to enjoy. Don't have the space? We have solutions for that, too. Search Dreamscape Slumber Events on Facebook. We are going to move right along to Happening in Frederick. <music> Happening in Frederick is sponsored by the Frederick Flying Cows. Only six home games remain. They play at the Hood College Arena. The team is 11 and 1. We've not lost at home yet, and we need your support to defend the barn, that's what we say. So uh, we play this Friday at 7 p.m. and Sunday at 3 p.m. 
Um, I say we because I'm the official MC for the Frederick Flying Cows. And we have a great time at the games. Uh, it's interactive. The kids will get to meet the players after the game. The players love chatting with the kids and taking photos, and we'd love to see you there. Also, if you know somebody who's looking for a little part-time gig, we are looking for an ice cream scooper. We have an area called Utterly Sweets, uh, which we sell Rocky Point Creamery ice cream and um, little flying cow cookies, but we need an ice cream scooper for the last six games of the season. It is, uh, I think it pays $50 per game, and uh, we just need somebody who can go pick up the ice cream and be at the arena about two hours before game time. So if you know of somebody looking for a little part-time gig, uh, there is no age restriction. So if you have someone who is under driving age, you would just need to take them to get the ice cream. You can drop them off at the arena and pick them up after the game. So if you uh, know of anyone who's looking for a little part-time gig, let us know. All right, if you want to know what's happening in Frederick, you have to check out the Everything Frederick calendar. I've been working very hard on this, and uh, I'm going to show you. It, I mean, it is chock full of events. Um, you can see here this weekend <laughs> keeps getting busier and busier. But if you want a copy to access this calendar, which is updated all the time, and it will be updated on your end too, text the word CALENDAR to 888-465-2944 and you're going to get the link directly to this calendar I'm sharing with you now. All right, so tomorrow there is some good stuff going on. Uh, there is the Everything Frederick and More Karaoke for a Cause to Benefit SOS Safe Ride. Uh, we want to put an end to drunk driving in Frederick County and you can do that by singing your favorite song. You don't have to sing well. It's all good. You're just going to pay a little money to do so, which is going to go to the Safe Ride Foundation. SOS Safe Ride is also the Bushwallers Charity of Choice, uh, Charity of the Month, sorry, which uh, means that for the entire month of April, and we have a whole nother week almost, uh, including this night, tomorrow, you can further support the mission by adding a donation to uh, your Bushwallers receipt when you leave. And if you take that receipt with you, your ride home is free with SOS Safe Ride. Uh, just take good care of your drivers. So the way it works, they bring two drivers. One drives you in their car and they, the second driver drives your car home. So there's no excuse about, oh, I got to get my car home because I have to go to work on Friday. Your car will be parked safely at your home with SOS Safe Ride. All right, Saturday. Oh my, look at this. Look at Saturday's day. Um, it is chalked, chalk, chalk. But go do what you need to do in the morning. And then by 3 p.m., I want you at the Carroll Creek Amphitheater for Battle of the Bands. I'm one of the judges uh, for the event. And of course, everything Frederick and more and the Goddess Group of Real Estate are the main sponsors with M&T Bank this year. So we're gonna be out there having a great time supporting the Boys and Girls Club of Frederick. And actually tomorrow we're gonna hear from Gerard about uh, this event that he has put on. This is the second year. On Sunday, we have the Pulling for Veterans Flea Market. If you haven't gotten your booth yet, do so. It's gonna be a great day. A uh, perfect day to either sell your wares or head on out there to shop from the 100 plus booths that will be set up. All the money for the booth space benefits pulling for veterans. And that's at the AmVets Farm located right near Tree Trekkers off 144. And the America's a 250 History Fair is on Sunday. And I'm going to let Joanne and Doug tell you all about that event, if I can find it here. Hang on one second. This is great. Uh, but it's going to be a fun day. That one is at the um, Carroll Creek Linear Park. And um, it's going to be going on from noon to four. All right, here we go.
greatest things about Good Morning Frederick is I get to learn so much. In the last three weeks of doing this show, I have only interviewed about three people that I knew previous, which is tells you how many great things there are in our town. And this is one of them. I'm here with Joanne Baum and Douglas Jones from the Daughters of the American Revolution and the Sons of the American Revolution. Welcome to you both. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so there is a big event coming up. Um, I guess very quickly, Joanne, if you can tell everyone about the group, the Daughters of the American Revolution, what is the group about? Everyone in the, in the group is descended from someone who either fought in the American Revolution or aided the revolution in some way. So they could have been a doctor that helped, they could have been someone who gave wagons and some horses. It, the, the service part of it varies. But everyone is descended from someone who was around during the revolution and helped the American cause. Wow. So that means I have to do some genealogy, right? Mm -hmm. But we have people <laughs> who could help you with that. I love it. I love it. And Doug, the uh, event that is coming up. The 28th uh, from noon to 4 p.m. down at the amphitheater at Carroll Creek Linear Park. So it's open to the public. A great opportunity to bring your kids to learn more about history. Uh, we're, yeah. we're planning it to be kind of a tour that you can take. It'll start in the first years of our country and work all its way up to the present as you work your way through, through a pathway. And so it should be a lot of fun. Oh, so. that's really great. The daughters and sons are getting ready to, we're, we're gearing up for America 250, which happens in 2026. So that's the 250th anniversary of the Declaration of Independence. Yes. So there are a lot of America 250 commissions going on, national, state, and locally we were deciding, well, what can we do? What can we get going that will interest people in history, get students ready for America 250? So we're not gonna wait until that July 4th, we're gonna start now. So we got on this idea of a history fair where we have all kinds of actors, living history people, people who represent different time periods, museums, um, just history people from all over Frederick County. And we're gonna focus on the history of Frederick or the history of Maryland in particular. So the signers of the declaration and the constitution that were from Maryland are part of our focus. But we have groups coming who are focused on many different points in um, our history. It's That's also, it's also multicultural. We have the African American Resources Cultural and Heritage Society, the Arch Society, uh, the Asian American Center, because the American story is not solely, you know, one group of people. It it, tra it covers a whole variety of diverse populations. So, yeah, that's really great too, because you know I think it again kind of shows the diversity of Frederick, not only today but even you know the up and coming. Frederick of the early days. Um, you know, it's funny when you said that the 250th year is coming up soon. You know, I, I was around during 1976, obviously, and uh, I kind of had forgotten about that. So yeah, it's really quite interesting to realize that, uh, you know, we're gonna be 250 years old. And I'm sure that you guys are planning some pretty spectacular things for that. Well, we're, we're gonna do it one thing at a time. So we don't have any big announcements yet, but we will. Okay, okay. All right, so this event, what time does it go on on the Sunday, the 28th? Noon to 4 p.m. Okay, and uh, great for all ages, you know, from the grandparents down to the grandkids, I would imagine to be able to kind of remember or learn what uh, Frederick's impact or, uh, you know, the impact on Frederick and to Frederick for uh, from all those years ago. And there'll be people in period costumes and things like that. So there were some wonderful photo ops to, you know, have an opportunity. Yeah, that'll be excellent. What do you recommend uh, people do if they want to learn more about history period, but certainly about this American Revolution time and the impact on the country and the people that were a part of it, Joanne? 
Um, well, there are a lot of America 250 websites coming up right now. There's a national one and there's a Maryland State 250 website. So those things are coming up. Um, a lot of the focus is not just on 250 years ago. We're looking at all of American history and we're also looking at what are what what is America going to look like in another 200 years? Mm. So it the the whole America 250 concept is not just to look at that commemorative event of 250 years ago, but where America has been, what it's doing now, and what's going to happen in the future. So that's why we want to make it multicultural, multi generational. Um, it it's a big concept to grasp. Uh, so we decided that the history fair might be able to cover a lot of ground. We've got yeah. people from Civil War history. We've got people, I've got a couple ladies coming who want to talk about women's suffrage. Um, we have people with different historic trades that are going to be there. Uh, Catoctin Furnace is going to be there talking about the enslaved Americans. And they're also going to talk about how, what the Iron Furnace was what it meant was meant to do and how it actually operated so i think there's a lot of things that that maybe might draw attention in in different ways to our history yeah and joanne you were saying earlier before we started uh recording about your involvement in the daughters of the american revolution that your aunt got you involved uh a few minutes ago not not terribly long ago but You've been a part of the organization for quite some time. What have you seen over your period of time in the group that, you know, has inspired you um, and, you know, the people that have been involved? The, the DAR really, while we're all have, have a shared history, um, our goal is to be a women's service organization. So we do a lot of work with veterans. Um, we really appreciate commemorative events. We're, we're patriotic, but not political. We're really into education and, and helping teachers or students um, in any way that we can. So uh, we like to be very involved in the community and we, we find different things. We had a Christmas party and did blankets for Project Linus. Um, so that's what keeps me interested, is that next service project, that next way to give back to the Frederick community. Well, that's fantastic. And again, you know, organizations like yours just help to make this community even richer and better uh, for all of us. Doug, your, uh, your involvement in the organization, though new, what have you gotten out of it so far? Well, it's wonderful to have an opportunity to give back to the community, as Joanne said. And our organization, and we're having a, one of our annual dinners this coming Tuesday. We'll be recognizing firefighters. We'll be giving a life-saving award out, an EMT of the Year Award, and a Firefighter of the Year Award. So uh, we also, our organization encourages uh, youth to participate. So we do an essay contest and an oratory contest each year for middle schoolers for one. and a uh, high school age for the other. Uh, so we're recognizing those. We we're very involved with the Eagle Scout program and we're recognizing Eagle Scouts in the area here as they receive that award. And there's about uh, 60 young people a year that are receiving that award. So it's it, we're also trying to encourage good citizenship and young people to discover more about the heritage and the history of our country, no matter how long their families have been here yeah well that that's really incredible and you know we'll talk we'll be talking more about uh the event throughout the week on good morning frederick but mark your calendars for the 28th from noon to four carroll creek and uh, you can look out for all the history that is frederick and beyond uh on that day and i will make sure where can people find out more about the daughters and sons of the american revolution we we point people to our facebook page the sergeant lawrence everhart chapter of the sons of the american revolution that's it's that's the best material you can find on it actually shows what we do awesome well i really appreciate you guys taking the time today we look forward to experiencing the history 
come Sunday the 28th. And um, yeah, I look forward to talking to you guys again soon. Well, thank you very much for this, Danny. We certainly appreciate your time today. So. Absolutely. My pleasure. So very cool event happening on Sunday. And don't forget on Tuesday, Shannon Flannery, the founder of Everything Frederick and More and the Goddess Group of Real Estate and I invite you to the ribbon cutting and grand opening of the home of Everything Frederick and my company, Promo Circus. The ribbon cutting is at 4.30 and happy hour to follow from five to seven. We've got live music, food and beverages. Shannon has organized everything. She's phenomenal and you're gonna love the shop. It is very cool. And uh, I will be reaching out to some artisans to have their things on consignment there that people can purchase. So we're gonna get all of that taken care of for you and the links and details for these and many many more events are on the everything frederick calendar remember just text calendar to 888-465-2944 and if you have an event that you want included on the calendar all you have to do is email it to everything frederick live at gmail.com Okay, don't forget today's giveaways. We've got tickets to the cows game. Just text the word cow to me and I'm not gonna take it personally or have any offense. Uh, and I'm gonna give you tickets to one of the last six games happening at Hood College because you really, really need to get out and enjoy this team. They are so fun to watch. Every game, the past, well, the past three games have been kind of nail biters and uh it's exciting and really a great time for the entire family uh we are back tomorrow with wayne dorsey from the safe ride foundation christine van bloom from empty nest kitchen and i'm going to take you to the inn at fingerboard farm subscribe to the youtube channel please spread the word get your friends to subscribe i'd love to hit 200 subscribers by this weekend and uh that is the one place you can assure you're not going to miss an episode, no matter what Facebook does. Until then, search for Everything Frederick Live on TikTok. And you can follow me on TikTok. I'm Danny, just Danny. You'll find me there. Also, Promo Circus and Good Morning Frederick are on all those social medias. And I'm trying to do better about Instagram. A lot of you are fans of the gram, and I am trying to keep up with that one as well. All right, until tomorrow, be great, Frederick. Have a wonderful, wonderful Wednesday, and I will see you tomorrow morning.